every affiliate does reviews, every affiliate has the same pretty much review. Yeah. And there's nothing personal about those reviews. The ones that do best from my eyes is when I'm reading them and it's got something personal in there. It's a personal experience, what they've, if they've got an example of how customer support helped them or didn't help them or what was problematic or whatever, or you can easily see if someone is actually been through the playing process of signing up a casino because they'll mention all the pitfalls and mention the fact that you can never ever find the withdraw button anywhere. That's one of the most frustrating things, but nobody ever ever mentions that in a review. No, in my review, I will. <laughs> Yeah. I said, it's a bloody awful site because you can't find it. You have to do this, these three steps to be able to make a withdrawal. And by then they hope that you've lost the will to live and you go back and start playing. I'm John Wright and you're listening to Affiliate BI, the business intelligence and affiliate marketing podcast brought to you by Statsdown. Welcome to the Affiliate BI podcast. Today we're chatting with Neil Walker, who is the founder of Live Casino Comparer. And he's also a consultant that does a lot of testing and feedback for game developers in the iGaming space. So Neil, welcome to the show. Hi, John. Nice to see you. So, um, yeah, I want to like, I, I've got a list of questions for you, but I actually want to pivot slightly different, which is, um, I believe you're a, an affiliate that doesn't really, I don't want to say you don't care about link building, but you tend to, maybe my opinion is to do it more naturally where it seems like the whole industry is buying links. And you're more of a product focus or product first uh, kind of guy. Just want to talk about um, what that's done for you and what's your philosophies on link building and SEO. Okay. Yeah, um, certainly. Um, I, I had no previous experience when I, um, when I became a, a, an affiliate. So I was pretty much a blank, blank piece of paper. Um, so um, I just basically started to write content that I wanted to read. Um, it, it, it was as simple as that. I didn't even know there was such a thing called SEO. Um, I found out how to create a website. Um, I started doing a whole load of research and then thought, you know what, this research is the sort of stuff I'm really interested in. So I just write everything down that I find. Um, and of course, some were reviews of casinos, some were reviews of games and some were content that I just thought, you know, it'd be really cool if someone did this and I couldn't find anyone that had done this, you know, I'd really want to know what sort of sits behind the camera because we're talking about live dealer games. So I approached the live dealer, um, operators and that was difficult to be fair. You know, I went to a few conferences and sort of pitched up at, um, evolution stand was my first one and said, hi, I'm, and then looked at me with blank eyes and who the bloody hell are you and why should we talk to you and, and whatnot. Um, I eventually managed to get to sit down with, with someone and he explained that, um, you know, I needed to sort of show how enthusiastic I was about live casino before they would even, even want to spare time talking to me. Yep. So I sort of went away, not with a flea with my ear in flea in my ear, but with a sort of mantra, yeah, I must do better really. Um, so yeah, so I did that. So I just write, started writing content about stuff that I was interested in and put it on my website. Um, yeah, SEO didn't even understand what those three letters meant. Um, I didn't know that there was any, um, standards for writing content or anything. Um, I just sort of used my business background, uh, cause I had a you know career before I became an affiliate and thinking, you know, I used to write business reports all the time, um, management summaries and a whole load of stuff that people consumed. So I sort of knew how to write content that other people could read. Um, so I just follow those standards, you know, and I went back and thought, you know, how, how are books presented? Oh yeah. You have an index and you have this and the bibliography and you have all these things. So surely my website needs to sort of contain those principles. So that's what I adopted. I just adopted a, an approach that made sure that the content was laid out. It was easy to read. Um, it was thorough. Um, it answered the questions that you would probably ask yourself as you're reading content, um, to stop yourself asking those. So I always include the answers in the content now. Um, and that's pretty much how I started. And then, and then people started banging on at me that, you know, your website's not going to do anything if you haven't got backlinks and it's, you know, if you're not SEO, you're not going to do anything. And, um, suddenly backlinks became a huge problem for me, even though I didn't realize that it was an issue in the first place. You know, I was already getting traffic 
Um, so, uh, I started getting a few links from friends. I wasn't going to buy anything or why on earth would I? Um, and then people said, oh yeah, natural links are the things that are, are really powerful. And what the hell's a natural link and how the hell do you get that? You know, I'm a small website that's got an audience of tens of people who the hell is going to find me and suddenly start linking to me. You know, so the, the thought of a natural link happening sort of on its own without any help from me, I, I just didn't understand how that could occur. I, yeah. Yeah. If you've got a big website, then it does occur naturally. You know, if you produce a new story and you're the first to do it, then people are going to link to you, but you know, that has to be out there and hundreds of thousands of people have already got to seen it before it becomes a natural link. So as a smaller fit, it's, it's a bit difficult. Um, and then one day I did pick up one, <laughs> you know, so one of those 10 people that are reading it, you know, linked to the site and that was quite nice of them. Um, so I asked them why, um, I contacted them, I asked them why, you know, what was it? And they so, you yeah, know, it was good content and it suited what we were writing about. So, um, yeah, so there you are. And I think also I wasn't a threat, you know, I was a fairly small, small website with some interesting content really. So, um, and I think I picked up some natural stuff, you know, so when people in forums are talking about games and things, they might often link to my site where I've written an article about it or. Uh, put some statistics or data up to support something, you know, people like that sort of information. Um, so I get linked to from, from forums. Um, I've had links from the press, um, for, you know, articles that I've written, but they were shamefully written for the press, um, you know, to try to evoke something. And I got that from an SEO agency that I started using because everyone told me I should use an SEO agency and it took me probably 12 months to realize that I was just pouring my money down the, the plug hole. You now everyone told me I had to use them, you know, I had to do best practice and I said, yeah, okay, understand that, you know, and I'm a bit raw. Um, but if you're as good as you are, say you are, I'll pay you on the results. Oh, we, we can't do that. You have to pay us up front. We can't guarantee anything. So, well, hang on a minute. So if you're selling me a service that you then can't substantiate and said it works then what on earth is going on here? So, I, so I looked into it, I studied it quite hard, um, and actually sort of decided that it was a bit sort of, you know what, this is one of those industries where someone tells you, you've got to have it. And because everyone else says you've got to have it, you sort of go along with it. And then, but the people that you buy that service from can't actually, they can give you like a psycho babble about how great they are and all these technical stuff. But at the end of the day, they're not um, big enough to actually stand behind what they're saying and say, actually, yeah, we'll do all this work for you. And then we'll pay you on, on the results that we get for you. No one has ever said that, <laughs> that, that I'm ever aware of. Um, so I realized that while the agency did a lot of good things for me, you know, they helped me think about structure and they helped me, um, you know, fix some technical issues I had technical SEO as they called it. Um. The content, they couldn't help me with the tool because they hadn't a clue about how to write the type of content I wanted to. They had content writers that would produce stuff for me and it was quite frankly rubbish um, because they just didn't understand one, the industry and two, players and three, the games that, you know, that, that I wanted to talk about. So they couldn't help me on that aspect. So I, I got rid of them, um, you know, and saved myself, you know, quite a lot of money a month. <laughs> And it's not held me back quite honestly. Um, you know, when I look at my statistics on one of these sites there, it's technically, it's not a performance site. You know, my Google, what do they call it? The, um, console and analytics. Yeah. The analytics are all really poor. You know, I don't think I've got one good quality page in terms of performance on my website anywhere. Um, you know, my load times are, are too slow. Um, so technically you look at what I've got, it's, it's not what Google say you should have, but on the flip side, that's hasn't stopped my site growing. Um, maybe it would accelerate the growth if I had a more performant website, but you know, these are just, we're talking about sort of milliseconds of difference between something yeah. that's ranked good and something that's ranked poor. Um, I've had people look at it and they struggle to, to make the improvements that Google would like me to make. 
Um, I'd have to strip out so much of the website to actually get it to be performant, but it sort of wouldn't deliver what, what it would do. So I, you know, it's another one of these things There's all this stuff being spoken, you must do this, must do that. I've just stuck to, I can write content. I know the content. I write it in a way that I like to read it. Um, and I hope the people that, that find my website enjoy it. And, you know, because of that, um, I seem to be doing okay, you know, um, back in, when was it? February, February 23, my site got tanked by Google, um, in the, was it the reviews? It was the reviews update, I think. Okay. And since then I had a pretty rocky ride. It's been up and down with each update, you know, a new update comes along, I recover, the next update comes along and I tank a bit, not so much. And then up and down, up and down. This last update. Uh, if you look at my sort of figures now, I've had a tenfold increase in traffic since February 23. So in just over, so in about 18 months, my traffic has gone up tenfold. And this last release has had a big impact on this, probably gone up by five or six fold in just the last, last release, I would yeah, say. It's um, definitely since, picked up. Since August. So I've seen a, a, a big uplift and obviously with a big uplift in traffic. My FTDs have improved, my rankings have improved, and things are all looking rosy at the moment. So Google's showing me some love at the moment, but it's not, doesn't mean that I'm complacent. So I am doing some of the things that they've talked about in some of the updates. So, you know, I'm making sure that my authorship is very visible on my articles now. So I haven't gone back and retroactively done it. Just when I go through and refresh, I do it. But I actually authored the site anyway. My image is on the front page. Which is you know, smart. You can contact me. Um, it, in the news articles, it, it's there. Um, the only place it isn't in, in is the individual articles. And I'm gradually you know, adding stuff as I do it. I'm not doing it in one hit. I just do it as and when I create new articles or I go back and um, update, refresh old articles. Yeah. Because um, cool. I think that is part of, part of it. You know, I, I also did a big purge on my site recently. So I deleted a huge amount of old archived articles, um, old news articles, nobody cares to read something back from 2010. So, you know, I've deleted, you know, quite a lot of content from there. That was more content for content purposes, um, rather than, you know, money-making content or content of interest, you know, I don't cause, I don't call news stuff that interesting, you know, it's of its moment within a, you know, two or three weeks, perhaps a month, it's it's uh, relevant. And then after that, it becomes irrelevant unless you're, you know, linking to it for other, other reasons. So I, I, I want to touch upon that, what you just mentioned there, which is, I find fascinating. I mean, there is a weird problem in the SEO space where what I see is like most affiliates that have some success, they're not always using an agency. And if it was that easy to use an agency, we'd all do it. Yep. But what I personally find is a lot of them, basically they either grow an in-house team or the founders to basically like, look, I got to, I got to do one more additional skill on top of what I'm doing as an additional job. And I've been there before I've done SEO consulting, I've done my own SEO and there's always more to do. And it's in an ideal world, you'd actually have one, a full-time SEO doing this and two, someone who's good, which is not easy to find. And I think for agencies, there are good agencies out there, but I personally find in iGaming, they're kind of difficult because, um, you know, it's, uh, everyone's doing sales. Like what, what you said as an opportunity, I would personally jump at, uh, cause what I like about your site and your content is that you can write that content better than I can. And I've got 20 years experience in iGaming, like you're super niche on live dealer. So, I mean, like that would be an easy one to say, let me, let me do the SEO while you do like the heavy lifting of the content. I mean, like a performance deal should be a no brainer. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, if for some reason, I, and I, you know, I have to say that the SEO company I chose, I deliberately chose not an iGaming SEO company, so they'd never been in the space before. So I wanted someone that was outside of the, the gaming industry because okay. I didn't want them, I didn't want them to do exactly what everyone else was doing. Um, you know, my, my, my thought was, well, I need to do something different. Um, and it different helps and that's, that, that, that's good. I don't want to be doing the same old, same old, I mean, it's just like reviews, you know. Every affiliate does reviews. Every affiliate has the same pretty much review. Yeah. And there's nothing personal about those reviews. Um, you know, the ones that do best from my eyes is when I'm reading them 
and it's got something personal in there. It's a personal experience, what they've, you know, if they've got an example of how customer support helped them or didn't help them or what was problematic or whatever, or, you know, you can very rare, you can easily see if someone is actually been through the playing process of signing up a casino, because they'll mention all the pitfalls They'll mention the fact that you can never, ever find the withdraw button anywhere. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, that's one of the most frustrating things, but nobody ever, ever mentions that in a review. No, in my review, I will. <laughs> Yeah. I said it was a bloody awful site because you can't buy, you know, you have to do this, these three steps to be able to make a withdrawal. And by then they hope that you've lost the will to live and you go back and start playing. Um, you know, so it's, it's, um, you, you can tell where you've got agency writers. It's, you know, just so obvious to me whether yeah. you know, a real player understands it, but you know, that's the industry that we're in. So, you know, and it, that's helpful to me. You know, if everyone's doing one thing and I do something different, then that's good. Yeah. I actually think that, you know, to just kind of like take a step back and go, okay, if I were to give advice on your site, um, I don't think it needs much technical SEO. I think you got the content like as good as you can get it. Like just don't stop that. And I think the link building is interesting because, you know, it's, I don't know too many affiliates that will build an affiliate site, have success without actively trying to get links or build them. Um, but I think you're actually in a weird position where you have natural link building where it happens on its own, then you're buying money, like you're basically spending money to buy links. And then I think there's in the middle where it's like, what is the effort you can do to gain a link? Or what is something that you could pay for that helps the link building? So it's still technically natural. I mean, I think people, they kind of call this white hat. You know, you said, for example, it's like you got, you know, mentioned in the news. Like, well, how do you get more of that? Sometimes that costs time, which in some cases can be money. It's like, oh, I need to hire someone to do outreach to do this. And, but I think, uh, I think that would probably be the, the most impactful thing you could do without needing to spend too much time on SEO. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I do pay for the odd link. I'll probably buy a link a month. That's probably it. And I try and pick up free links with affiliate programs and, you know, other, other, other things like that. Um, but I do often sit there and think, you know, what could I write? I, could I write an article that would generate some links or discussion, not necessarily links, but generate some interest in one way or another. So what sort of article would that need to be? Well, it needs to be a controversial article. It needs to be something that's going to polarize people. You know, people are going to love it or they're going to hate it. And would they do that enough to be able to comment about it? So, you know, using LinkedIn, for example, is a good good platform for that, but you tend not to get many links from LinkedIn to a, a, a website. It tends to be more to your, your, your page. Um, and I don't know if Google ever looks that far, so I can, you know, link to a link, a link to something I've posted on LinkedIn, but whether Google follows that and then understands what's going on there, I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I think LinkedIn. so. And like, I'll, I'll just comment on that quickly where. What I think Google's trying to do in the past year with the helpful content update and all the other updates that are clearly benefiting you. I mean, on your website, there's a picture of you and it's like, ask Neil a question or ask you for help. Yeah. That's personalization. And I think when you go into things like LinkedIn, you don't always need to link back to your content inside LinkedIn because LinkedIn as a social channel, they really hate it when you link outside of the platform. Now, if you're doing that on the newsletter, which is LinkedIn Pulse, um, which is basically either kind of more of their public content facing side. They kind of expect you to link out and it's fine. It's a no follow link, but I actually do believe Google's picking up on all of this because right. Google's trying to understand who is the authority in this. And eventually it's like, well, who are you as an authority? You're like your name is maybe not, it's maybe a bit more common, but if someone's looking for you in iGaming, you're going to have your own knowledge panel. Like you're yeah. basically building your persona as the, one of the go-to experts in live dealer space. Yeah. So I use, um, YouTube for a lot of that really, you know, my videos, cause I think, you know, people like to consume through videos rather than reading that my videos can go on a bit, you know, I'm a bit long winded, so <laughs> people skip through them, but, um, you know, I link in the descriptions of the videos back to the main article so people can read it if they want to. So I, I, I complete the circle. Um, I don't affiliate on the, any of the any of the, uh, the videos I, I could do, 
Um, but I, I don't, um, you know, at one time you couldn't completely, but you can now, if you're careful about the, the operators that you, you choose. Um, but even link, even YouTube gets a bit sniffy about affiliate links when you put them in, you yeah, know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Do it if you need to let, like, I mean, here, I, here's I, what I, I recommend. Like, it's actually better to take, if you're going to have a link, take them to the review page yeah, or your product, product page. Yeah. That, and that's what I do. I just do that naturally. And I say in the video, you know, there's a list of casino. If you want to play, there's a list of casinos on there that will, where you can play the game. Um, so that sort of completes the circle. And, you know, I've got a good, you know, I've got nearly 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, and again, I'm not actively chasing sister. That all happens organically and naturally, you know, and I've had some videos that have had, you know, half a million hits and, uh, yeah, which is quite nice to think that you know there's half a million people out there that <laughs> listen to me bore them for half an hour. Um, that's quite amusing. Um, so yeah, but it's a good it's a good um, vehicle for me to uh, you know show my authority. And and as a result of that, I tend to get lots of you know ask me questions come through the website. So people contact me via that route. You know, I've seen your video. Da, 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 da. Can you help me out here? Or this had happened. Or wherever I've got some information that you might be interested in. So, you know, it's. And those questions, they become content, I'm assuming. Like when people ask you. Yeah, they do sometimes, or they might actually become a piece of consultancy work for me. So quite often, um, you know, games developers will see me and, um, you know, watch my channels. I know a lot of them do. So as soon as they release the game, I think they, they can't wait to see my, my review. Um, and I know they do because when I go to the conferences, you know, I'm People are always tapping me on the shoulder as I walk around now, which is quite strange. Um, you know, they recognize me. I have no clue who they are. Um, it's out oh, great. I just want to say hello. See you in the videos. Love them. So, uh, that's quite nice. And some of them have been quite pretty young ladies. She <laughs> can this from, uh, the various, so that's quite, uh, you're, you're now a celebrity. That always did your ego a huge amount. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so, um. I think uh, one thing that you're also doing well is that, you know, it, it's probably, you're not even thinking about from SEO, you're actually like product and user, which is great because that's what a lot of SEOs are, are preaching these days. But I think you come at it from a different point of view where, because you're going deep on a topic, I think you're actually publishing stuff that other people haven't written about. So what we're typically seeing in you know, the last 10 years of iGaming and SEO, especially in affiliate marketing is. Everyone's writing the same content, like casino review. They're not adding their own spin on it. They're not adding their own take. They're, they're not even adding their own personality saying, here's what I think about it. Um, but I think you're doing that by default. Like you're going super deep into the games. You're one of a few that actually would go that in that level of detail. And I think that's worked working in your favor where maybe even people might start copying you, which is fine because Google's going to know that you're the one who's pushed, you know, this new content forward. And I think, uh, I think the new search engines are going to be aware of like, well, what is new content? Like rewriting content. I mean, that's everywhere. That's AI content. Yeah. It's not unique. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And the use of AI, I do use AI because I use it to help me sort of structure, um, articles now, or I ask it, you know, what's the best structure for an article and it'll give it for me. So that's useful, but I don't use it for creating content. I sometimes might use it if I'm trying to work out mathematical problems or, you know, stuff like that, probabilities and, you know, cause I'm not a mathematician. So it's quite, I use it quite for that, but then the results I use, I can then articulate those in a, in a way that people can understand because, you know, I'm driven there because I want to understand, oh, you know, if there's six balls in a lottery game, what's the probability of you getting one number or two numbers, three numbers. So, you know, I explore that and then play around with with the data it gives me and then ask some more questions. So I can then start thinking about, well, if I'm talking about strategies, how can I help players build a strategy around, you know, betting, you know, what's a good strategy and what should you not do and what's the result of that? Um, so, you know, I, th I think in the, the older days, you've got people like, um, the wizard of odds who would do it, you know, he's, um, came from a very mathematical background and he would, you know, you go to his site, I know he's sort of still there, but sort of moved on. Um, but yeah, the analysis that he would do on games and playing through and looking at RTP and that is just at another, another level. <laughs> um, very interesting guy. I've had 
you know, lunch with him in Vegas when I last went and, you know, we, we exchanged articles and links and things. So it's been quite a fruitful, a fruitful um, thing. But again, he approached me because he liked my content um, That's awesome. uh, and he felt that he could add something. So yeah, we, we worked together on a few things, which is quite, quite nice. Uh, I mean, just to, to prove the point, I mean, I started in, in iGaming 23 years ago, bonus hunting. And I, I went to a site, it was like probably the first site or the main site I actually cared about was that one at Casino Meister. So with Wizard of Odds, I'm like, I'm learning basic strategy blackjack. I'm learning it across all the different game providers. He had everything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, if you find a site that's got good data, um, and stuff that you can use and, and understand, then yeah, you, you just keep going back. Yeah. And you mentioned Casino Meister as well. I mean, Brian, um, yeah, it's become a good, good friend over the years. You know, I was introduced to him 10 years ago, well, 11 years ago when I came into the industry and yeah, you know, the other guy, the guy that introduced me. So I've sort of grown up in, um, within a group of affiliates that are relatively small, that have done things from a player's perspective. So they've been my mentors, um, so to speak, you know, that I followed their lead rather than, um, you know, what some of the other bigger affiliates have been doing. Yeah. But yeah, so my group of cohorts are Brian and Debbie and Ian, yeah, yeah. Dave and yeah, there's a whole lot of things. So. Yeah, I, I would agree. Cause I mean, I actually went in the opposite direction. I started basically when I uh, built affiliate sites, I was focusing on the SEO first and I was still doing the same thing as what everyone else does. So, I mean, like I had some success, but I think I would have actually had a lot more had I actually said, no, I'm going player first and then I'll, I'll sort the SEO later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just seemed logical to me and not knowing about SEO. It was, it well, it's was funny because you say that, but what I see everywhere else, and this is kind of common in SEO in any industry, whether it's affiliate marketing or e-commerce or anything else is everyone's doing money first and then product second. Like product's almost like the secondary thought. And um, like it, if it came natural for you, like that's great. Uh, I can say for me, it didn't. Um, mm. The only things that did came natural where it's like, how do I compare my situation to yours? Well. What are my hobby sites? Cooking and houseboating. Well, those are products I've built that are user first. Like I'm not even thinking about the SEO and the SEO is kind of like, it just happens after the fact. And then even for what I'm doing today with my software, it's like, I actually like B2B content. I like SEO content. So when I do that a bit more naturally, you know, I don't even have to think about SEO or yeah. I'm not thinking about money first and then, you know, and then product second. No, it's product is number one. It's the driving yeah. force. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, when you look at, um, you know, the Google search results, if you, you know, type in best on my casinos or whatever, you know, whatever best, you know, term you want, the page that you get, is just a list of the casinos above the fold, certainly. Yeah, it's the first thing that hits you. And I know it sort of meets the intent of what the, of what the, the question is that you type into Google, you know, so you're meeting Google's thing, but actually as a piece, piece of information, it's a load of old rubbish, really. You know, you just got a list of casinos. There's no, um, not concept. What's the word I'm looking for? There's no context to it. Yeah. Right. So you just get, you know, name of casinos and bonus information that you don't really know if you're new, what any of that means. Uh, so you've got to scroll down the page until you start finding content and it's actually going to explain what you've just seen. You know, why these things are important and whatnot. Now, for existing players, for people that know, then it's probably helpful. They can probably, oh, yeah, I'm just looking for a new casino. Yeah, that's got a bonus that I like the look of, just and off they go. For new players, it's a load of old. It, it doesn't meet the intent, yeah. I don't think. But um, this is interesting because that, that's where I actually think the world of search is changing right now because. You know, I think, uh, you might not be a well-known personality in the player space yet. Like you're, you're building that persona, like no different than Brian is, but I think actually, you know, the way search is changing today, it's people are using social media to get their answers. They're like, I want to listen to a person that's going to tell me their top 10 casinos or top 10, whatever. And they're, they're going to probably consume it in a video format. So it yeah. might not always be in a live stream or a set YouTube video, but like, this is why Reddit is dominating so much. People are kind of going, I want the answer, not from AI content. And I don't want it from one of these traditional trashy affiliate sites that are just basically, like you said, they just rank and here's your whatever. And it's like, the intent is technically there, but it's, it's not deep. It's not a bottom of funnel content. It's not, let's get deep into it. I think we're, we're already moving into this transition where 
those fight sites might find their ways of still getting those rankings, but they're now using more people behind it. Like it's yeah. people buy from people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. It's spot on. Which means like my opinion is that, you know, your site and you as, as a personal brand, like you're actually, I think going to be worth more in time. So the more you keep working on the site, it's, you're almost kind of stuck with the site. You know, it's going to be difficult to say, Hey, we're going to replace you with some other person that is, we're going to try to train them with your experience and passion. Yeah, it's, it's in the back of my mind because, you know, at some point I do, you know, I'm 61 now, so I, you know, I want to retire. Um, so, I, <laughs> so I will want to, you know, sell my casino compare. Um, you know, that's certainly sort of within, within my, um, thoughts, but yeah, just how, how I do that and how I transition it from my face to someone else's face is, is the most difficult thing. I mean, you know, a new owner will do what they want with the site, you know, and so they might choose to do away with that authority, the face and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that's their business. Yeah. And do what they, they like. Or you become so something like, a maybe not like a part-time consultant, but it's like, it's kind of like, you're still going to be someone that let's pretend it was me that wanted to buy this site. Yeah. Um, I'd be like. I still need to find a way to have you activate it. Not full-time work, but I mean, if it's like, you know, a meeting once a week or the occasional appearance, it's, um, you as the authority would be helpful in actually building a team that can support this and, and keep it going yeah. forward. Yeah. I mean that, yeah, I wouldn't just sell it. I, I did say to someone, yeah, if I sell it, that's it. I just want to walk away and have nothing more to do with it. But, um, actually I quite enjoy doing quite a lot of what I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't enjoy the writing so much these days, but I like looking at the, um, the games. I certainly like giving my opinion. I like doing the videos because they're really easy to do. You know, it's just 20 minutes of my time, um, you know, learn the game, play it, talk about <laughs> what I think about it. Um, so that's quite a good thing. So I would, I would carry quite, be quite happy to carry on doing that because it's not much, much effort and not, not much time, but it keeps my face my face there, you know, I had someone that was interested in the site, um, and did quite a bit of due diligence uh, at the end, they just came around and said, we can't, the risk of you is just too great. You know, you're, you, because you framed with it so well, you know, if you yeah. walked away, then we would lose, lose that. And I thought it was a shame because I thought that was a real opportunity for, for them, um, and for the site as well, because, you know, my site is where it is because of me. Yeah. It's just me, you know, if there was a team behind my site and we could do more, it would absolutely fly in the rankings. I'm absolutely certain, you know, and if people are prepared to put, if link building so important and they're prepared to put some money into link building, then it would, it would, it would become much more than just like casino comparer. You know, it's got a good, it's got a really good base in live at the moment, yeah. but you know, it could be even, it could be much, much, much bigger. Um. I could make it much bigger on my own, but I'm just not prepared to put that time in at the moment. You know, I'm very much a lifestyle affiliate. So it's, you know, I'm doing all right out of it. Um, and I've got a nice lifestyle. Thank you very much. Um, which is perfect. Cause I mean, you do consulting. So it's kind of like you've basically, in my opinion, you've built your own personal brand, picked a very specific niche that I think is relevant. And, you know, if people want to know more about the live dealer space. I mean, like I now know who I can go to talk to for this. Yeah, it's, it's quite bizarre that the consultancy stuff, you know, it's, um, sort of just happened by chance. Um, and then I found myself sitting in a boardroom in Romania, um, with a whole load of, uh, techies <laughs> around, around the, the room, asking me questions about roulette. And these are the people that design and build these games. And they're asking me about what I thought about their games and roulette and what insights I could give them to make their games better. And, you know, I've sort of been in the industry for about five years then. <laughs> That's amazing. This is rather, rather remarkable. And then what was even more remarkable was, you know, I just told them what I thought. And then sort of six weeks later, they came up with a roadmap, pretty much of everything that I'd talked about improvements and said, yeah, we're working our way through this roadmap now. And you'll start to see all these changes come into our, our roulette games and, and whatnot. And then sure enough, they all started appearing. Um, and then Brilliant. some of the things that I mentioned started appearing at other markets. Well, <laughs> they, they all copy each other. I, actually, that, that's, that's one of the questions that I've written down. But um, maybe before pivoting into that question, uh, what do you see happening or interesting or changing in the live dealer space? 
because I see it in the background, but I'm tuning out because I'm like, I'm just a service provider for affiliates. I don't care what kind of affiliation you do. It's, I'm just helping you do your thing. And I've seen this piece of the business grow. Like just looking at companies like Evolution Gaming, I'm like, wow, they became giants. And yeah, um, I actually thought it was a tiny niche, but it seems to be much bigger than I realize. It's massive. Um, you know, um, live games, I don't know what the stats are, but they account for a huge amount of profit for a casino. Um, you know, games like roulette and blackjack and baccarat are the, are the three staple games, um, that all live casino providers have. They're the, the games that a traditional live dealer player want to, want to play. Um, and yeah, it's, it's much bigger than I think than people realize. And of course you can't play live dealer games for 10 P you know, the minimum blackjack hand you'll ever find is five pound, but very rarely you'll find a five pound table in the evenings. It's 15, 25 pound just to sit down, um, roulette again, you know, you might be able to play for 20 P a spin, but you don't, you, don't. <laughs> you know, so your, your minimum bet is a lot higher. Uh, and therefore the, uh, the amount to be gained is obviously higher for the casino. Um, even though there's probably less players, but then you look at a game like crazy time, which is one of the biggest games out there. Um, you know, they have concurrent players of, you know, 13, 14,000 at any one time, uh, all playing. And they've got two, two versions of that. They've got two crazy times plus all their other other games. Um, yeah, evolution are a special case because they've innovated massively in the industry and they've also, you know, consumed and, uh, bought other, you know, slot game developers and so forth. So they're much bigger than the original live dealer um, operator that they, they started out as, um, yeah, they're a massive, massive industry, but they, you know, they're looking at quality, you know, and they put the money in, um, they innovate They're you know, the innovator in the industry, everyone else follows what Evo do. Um, you know, if Evo has done something, then someone else will either copy it or try and re-innovate what's just been innovated and do something slightly different, but they would probably never have got there in the first place if Evo hadn't done the first innovation. So the concept of multipliers, everyone's got those now on their games or has got multiplier games, but that came from Evo and that came from lightning roulette. A game I hasten to add that I. I trashed in my video review, uh, when I first saw it, because I couldn't think why you would want to take less money on a straight up bet for the chance of getting a 500 X multiplier. It just didn't make sense to me, but, uh, I was wrong. And, no, uh, yeah, it's become the most successful game that Evo has produced to date. So, um, but that, just that concept of multipliers has been now, it's gone through all of the, all of the games. So every game's got a multiplier game and then all yeah. the other like to see casino providers will now start to copy that concept and when they're caught up. So everyone else is in catch up to Evo. Um, where we are in live theater at the moment, we've got more RNG creeping into live than we've ever had before. And that's because the games are becoming more complicated. Um, they're more difficult to get through compliance and regulatory, um, licensing. So RNG is a very easy way to, to do that. Cause it's cheaper, um, and it's easier to, to license. So that's why we're seeing a lot of RNG in these, um, game shows where we go next. I just don't know. You know, it's, I was wandering around a casino in Las Vegas 10 years ago. I could look at all the different games and go, yeah, we haven't got any of these in live dealer. So that's the future. That's what we're going to get in live dealer. And sure enough, we've. We've got quite a lot of those games now in Live Dealer. We've certainly got a whole range of side bets that we never had before um, in various games. Um, but what new games come out, I don't know. You know, I've chewed the fact with, with a lot of people. Um, and I think live games, for me, what I like about live games is the fact that I make decisions. So I play the games where there's an element of my decision making in there. So Blackjack, I have to decide whether I'm going to stand or I'm going to hit. Uh, and some of the other games like that roulette, I have to decide, you know, what numbers to bet on. Um, so I've got an active role in the game, um, games like Baccarat, you have no, all you decide is which spot to bet on you. The game plan is already defined and you just follow what, what comes out. 
So games that have got um, player interaction for me uh, are where I'd like to see the future. I see, uh, if I think about the younger generation, you know, I'd said I'm 61, so I'm old school. If I think about my son, the games that he's brought up on and potentially how he would cross over into gambling, the games that he's familiar with, so Call of Duty and Fortnite and all those other sort of games where you're role playing and you're doing something and you're you're getting a, a reward for completing something or whatever. I could see gambling games going in that direction. So if you had a, a game, what was like Squid Game or something, where you have a pool of players that start the game and one player ends up or five players end up at the end as a winner and you have to make right. strategic decisions along the way. I could see that becoming live gambling games. Um, there'd be RNG in it, but I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> if I'm yeah, thinking about it, you know, um, and I, you know, so whether they're looking at that, I'm absolutely sure that they're, they're looking at that sort of stuff and deciding what could, what could they do? What would fly past the regulators? What, how could they monetize gaming in a way that, um, there's not just RNG where you're just watching something unfold, where you've got some, some way to become involved. And, you know, if someone said to me, yeah, the, you could join this game, it's going to be an hour's worth of play, but it's going to cost you a hundred pounds to join, but you've got the chance to win 20,000 pounds for a hundred quid. You know what? I'd do it. Keep yeah, it's like a lottery time. ticket. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you're joining and then you just do whatever you do. Um, and I know that for the casino, that's an hour equals, we absolutely know how much revenue we'd make because the entry fee is this, that's the prize fee. This is how much it costs to run the game. We know what, how much money we're going to make. Um, so they could do that sort of stuff. And as long as the figures added up, they could do that and always make money. It's a bit like these, um, you know, car lottery things, you know, buy a ticket in the airport and you win a port, you know, this type of things, you know, it's selling enough tickets the people can buy 10 Porsches, give one away, it's go on and lose the money. So it's. You know, so that's innovation. I know Evo look back to our childhood and look at board games and other bits of pieces for inspiration and Pragmatic have done the same. And so have um, Playtech, um, you know, Snakes and Ladders. I think they're good ideas, but when the games hit the actual screen, they don't actually quite deliver what you hope they deliver because they've lost the essence of the board game that you played when you were a kid. Um, and that's... That's the difficulty I think they've got. They've got to maintain that essence of what made you play Monopoly every day or what made you play this, you know? Yeah. And I think there's always going to be the examples of uh, games that had a lot of money or marketing put behind them, flopped, and then the games yeah. that you're like, this is the ugliest or worst game ever, and it becomes just super popular. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Yuzugi have got a couple of games up their sleeves that are going to be coming out fairly shortly. And when I first heard about them, I thought, oh, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I've tried them in demo mode and they're, they just don't work. Um, so I was sort of looking forward to seeing the, the completed games, um, and, and, you know, reviewing them. And it's really sad <laughs> for such a brilliant idea. I think doesn't actually translate so well when you actually start playing it. Um, but we'll see, you know, I've been wrong lots of times, so I might be wrong about these ones. So we'll, we'll wait and see. So we sort of touched upon it a little bit, but what do you think it needs to change in iGaming? I mean, we kind of zeroed in on one aspect of Live Dealer, and I think you touched upon like what innovations are we having? Uh, you know, you've got one example of a company that's uh, pushing things forward, but there's always talk in our industry as a whole that everyone's just kind of copying each other. And it's like, what's new and exciting? So I want to get your take on it. Cool, cool idea. Um, I don't know. I've got a view. Um... New innovations only come out, you know, game changing innovations only come out once every five, 10 years, you know, in slots, I don't know much about slots, but in the, the last big innovation in slots that I could think of was mega ways, probably the new way of the, the slots tumbling and all that sort of stuff. You know, the big time gaming stuff, that was a, a bit of a game changer when they first, first came out, everyone's got them now, but, um. Yeah, Evo with their multipliers, um, with their first game show as well. They were, you know, pivotal, pivotal moments. 
what's the next thing? I, I don't know. Certainly on the, the casino side, I, I just, I just don't know. You know, if I look to again, wandering around the casinos in Vegas, there's nothing I see in there. Um, I think, oh, we haven't got that online. You know, online seems to be in advance of what land based is, is doing. Um, agreed. Or they, seem, or they seem to be good bed partners. You know, if you go to G2E in Vegas and you walk around the conference hall there and you see all the slot providers there with, uh, you know, sparkling slots and, you know, machines and things, we pretty much got those online and have had for a while. Um, you know, so the new games tend to be branded, you know, so the latest Batman, the latest Marvel, the latest this, you know, but they're all pretty much the same thing. It's same. just a branding exercise more than anything, anything else. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I gaming itself, you know, if you take apart, you know, the role of affiliates, um, I think, you know, I know you've got some questions about, about that. So we might, might touch on that in a minute, but it, it's difficult to look into a glass ball from a player's perspective. Cause that's where I am. I'm sitting right at the end of the end of the tunnel. I'm not in amongst it with the, with the developers or the, the forward thinkers thinking about what you can do. I'm reacting to what, what's already been, being put out. So it sounds like you're kind of halfway there. I mean, like if you are a consultant, then, you know, these other game providers are saying, Hey, we want to get your take on it. I mean, you know, I think one thing you're doing well is basically you're saying, well, I need to test and try these games. And if you don't test them, it's kind of like, you're just like everyone else, which has been, been affiliate marketing, iGaming for a long time. It's like get content writers that write about the games. They're, they're basically looking at other reviews of the games. They're not even trying them out. Um, I think that is changing. And I think there's always been a demand for players to gravitate towards, you know, what they want, which is like, who are the experts and authority? uh in the space so i think you're i think you're already building up that roadmap and it's uh you know it should be the insights or the main takeaway that other affiliates kind of go how am i going to pick a niche here what am i going to do you know how do i become the best at this and you know from your side it might look easy but i think for other people it's like are you willing to do this work if the answer is no it's like i'd say don't even get started yeah well even within sort of live there's niches within the niche you know you can go as deep as as you like um you know, I've tried to do stuff with a fairly broad, broad brush brush. And, you know, I admit, you know, I'm not an expert on a lot of these games. You know, I learn how to play them, um, try and work out whether I like it. I try and work out whether other people will like it. I try and work out how you can play them. So you get a decent amount of play time. Um, you know, and I do my research and, you know, I have a look around and because I'm the, that content doesn't exist anywhere. I've got to sort of work it out. Um, you know, I'm not copying anyone else. Um. In fact, you know, I don't look at competitor sites. I don't look at, you know, people say to me, well, you need to look at what your competitors are doing. Well, no, I don't actually, because <laughs> then I end up just copying what they're doing and, you know, that may or may not work. Um, you know, I'd rather do my own thing. Um, so I'd say the competitors, it's only useful to, if they're bringing something cool to the table, if they are, then you want to learn about it. Like what, do, what do they have as an edge in knowledge or information that I don't have? But when they don't have that, it's probably the opposite happening for you. I think people are probably looking at your site going, oh, we're rewriting this because I actually have that happening to me. It's like, I write content in affiliate marketing and I'm like, wait a minute, that idea I just wrote about is now appearing on other people's blogs, you know, <laughs> repurpose. I'm like, thanks, you know, next time, please link back. Yeah, but you know, it's, you know, it, it's annoying when it happens, but it's flattering when it happens because you know that you're, you've got a step in front, you know, and people, you're right. People do copy you, you know, um, it's a compliment. I, I naturally think of my competitors as being, and it's SEO as that tell me about competitors, nobody else. So I naturally think my competitors are other live casino sites, other affiliates are talking about live casino, but it's not from an SEO point of view, it's gambling.com and casinos.com and you know, all the huge, huge affiliates, they're my competitors. Well, actually I'm not competing with them at all. Um, because my content is reaching a different audience from the ones that they're going after. Um, you know, and where I try and compete on a toe to toe basis with them, I don't come off, I don't fare that well. I'm doing some, some things, but not in others because of the power that they've got behind them and the, the size of their networks and sites and things. So I don't even bother trying because that would send me down the wrong path. If I was to listen to the SEO as I would go. 
hell bent for trying to compete with the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris of the world when I'm a mini, you know, I want to be repeating, repeating, competing with other minis. Um, yeah, because I stand a better chance there. But then at the same time, I think you're still owning a space that they can't touch. So yeah, from, yeah, yeah, yeah. And from an acquisition point of view, that's always going to be of interest going, okay, if we can't do this well, it's, uh, how, how do we get this part of the space that is yeah. kind of like off limits for them? Yeah. And that's pretty, you know, and I, you know, I hope, I hope my site does go to an affiliate, um, you know, a larger affiliate because, you know, it, it deserves greater visibility. Um, yeah. You know, and that's my own, you know, that's my opinion. <laughs> They'll just look at the numbers. <laughs> Well, uh, rounding up uh, this discussion, I mean, I know you've got a background as a business analyst and I know you're product focused first, but um, there's data a lot behind your side um, in your business. So I want to ask, what do you think of the future of affiliate marketing is as it intersects with business intelligence? Uh, you know, when I first started my site, I was creating databases. I was logging every day, every... Um, Every minimum and maximum bet, every side bet, every game had and all that sort of thing. So I built a huge database of all the games every provider had, and then what games every casino had, because at that time, uh, live games weren't everywhere. So if you were looking for blackjack with a specific set of rules, it was quite difficult to find it. So I wanted to hold all that data so I could get the player to the right place. The difficulty I had was once I collected all the data was being able to create an interface at the front of it that people could query <laughs> to find the information they wanted. Um, so what I ended up doing was using that data and then just finding a way to be able to publish it on the site and let people just manually look through it. I couldn't actually make the connect. I couldn't create that bit of code that would, um, that would have done it. I could do it now because I could just type my requirements into chat GPT and it would just do it all for me. Um, okay. it, it yeah, works. Yeah, pretty much. I could get a working prototype anyway, um, using the data sets I've done. So it's something I may look back at, but so I think data actually is hugely important. Um, if you can, uh, find out a way, a way to use it, you've got to have the data and then you find out what do I want to use that data for and how can I monetize it? So I've got. Okay all sorts of ideas in my head, all sorts of data that I know if I collected that, I could monetize it like that. It create a, it would create a, I would need a, a real techie and a programmer to do it, but there are some knowing what player habits are, knowing lots, what sort of information they look for. And only a player would know this. I know what sort of site would absolutely fly with, um, with, with players for some of the data that I've think you could collect really good example of this is Traxino. So if you've ever seen Traxino, they're the first site to start scraping data of all the results of crazy time and the, uh, some of the other game shows and players just love data about past results. Yeah. So it helps them form an opinion of how to bet in the future. So they want to know when this number last came in so they can bet on that in the future and make some adjustments. So. The guys there have done a fantastic job. You know, I ran into them years ago when they first started and, you know, we did some stuff together, so I've sort of known them, but they've been very successful driving. It's a data driven site that's been become a very affiliate, a very good affiliate site. Um, so I think data will become even more important because it helps differentiate from the dross that's out there, all the templated sites to providing something specific that people want and even me as an affiliate you know i if i had more time having more data just about the performance of my website where my clicks come from where my ftds come from um would be really helpful and if i'd set up my links differently i would have that information now but go back 11 years when i didn't know what the hell i was doing i just did stuff to try and make things as simple as possible for me um, so I've used the same link for one casino right across my site. So that doesn't help me knowing well, what page they click that on and, you know, how's that ended up in the affiliate program and, you know, how did I convert them? So that would have helped me inform me on the content, what I need to change, what I need to improve, what are my really good money pages, 
And I've used things like events in Google Analytics. I've got someone to help me put all that together. Quite frankly, it's a bloody nightmare. Um, it's not easy to navigate, especially when you don't really want to navigate it. Don't make it easy for you to understand what's going on. I have got a list of obviously all my money pages and I know what's going on there. So it does help me to some respects, but it doesn't get me to where I really need to be to be able to make the changes that would really, really help me. Um, so I, I'm losing traffic all over the place. I'm absolutely certain. Uh, and just someone with a keen, keen eye and a bit of data behind them could sort out, you know, could improve the monetization of my site dramatically. Yeah. And, and I think what the takeaway to answer that would be, you know, I think these tools, they do exist, but they also re require a lot of time. No different than yeah. SEO. It's like, you can do the SEO yourself, but then you could really become a full-time SEO and not do your other full-time work yeah. building your site. I think uh, that will be the future of these uh, tools and affiliate marketing is uh, the more done for you service. Like I know it can be technical to set it up, but no one wants to do this because they'd rather spend time doing what they're good at, which is product. Yeah. Awesome. Neil, uh, thank you so much for doing this. I gained uh, a better insight and appreciation for not only what you do, but I mean, I've been studying product marketing for the last two years and um, I know what you're doing is the right thing. And I'm really happy to see that uh, the last uh, Google updates uh, put you in the uptick. So happy to showcase that to some of my audience. Just want to pass it back to you, uh, how people can get a hold of you. Uh, so there's the ask me on uh, my website and just click on that, put your name in and just send a message and it comes straight through to my email. My email is neil at livecasinocapera.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, again, you can message me through that or connect through, through that. That's probably uh, the best way. I do use Facebook and I use Twitter, um, but not so much really to communicate with with uh, anyone it's more just to showcase what content is on my site so uh yeah either direct email or through linkedin are probably the best best ways to get me we'll include that in the show notes neil thank you so much for doing this cheers thanks very much john thank you for tuning in to the affiliate bi podcast i'd like to take this time to ask for a small favor to leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast that helps us expand our reach to rank higher in podcast directories and reach more listeners.